The retro gaming scene has grown massively over the last 10 years or so, and the Xbox 360 unfortunately has fallen into the category of retro now. Along that community, there's also lots of people that like to restore the consoles, be it painting them, cleaning them, restoring their color, or otherwise modding them. That's why I designed this 3D printed shell for the Xbox 360 Slim. It only costs pennies to print, it's easy to assemble, and it's easy to customize. Printing these is pretty straightforward. There's only a couple things you need to keep in mind. One, just make sure all of the objects are flat on the build plate. And then secondly, just make sure you have your printer tuned in or you know it's quirks and stuff. So that way you can adjust for certain things. In my scenario, I just had to adjust some of the speeds a little bit because the outer walls were cooling differently and it was causing a lot of weird layer shift looking stuff. But otherwise everything printed fine. With that in mind, let's start assembly. First, for the hardware, all you're gonna need from the original console is nine original silver slash gold screws. You're gonna need five long black screws that hold the top shell together. You're gonna need two small black screws that held the RF board into place, the original power button, and then you're gonna need a Torx 8 and a Torx 10 bit. Optional parts would be a hard drive, an external wireless adapter for the fat models and the internal wireless adapter from this one. For the 3D printed parts, you're going to want a bottom panel, top panel, left and right panel, front panel, rear panel, RF support bracket, sync button, and a hard drive mount if you're using a hard drive. To start, you're going to want to make sure the power button is connected to the RF board. This will just make things easier in just a minute or two. Next, we're going to mount it to the RF support bracket. This support bracket is intended to make it so the RF board doesn't wiggle around when it's in the console since it has no other mounting points like it did in the original. You're just going to go ahead and use those two short black screws that originally came out of it and they'll secure it to the bracket no issue. Next, I'm going to go ahead and place the motherboard on the bottom panel. For this, you're going to want to make sure everything lines up, including the little pegs that are in the back. These little pegs, as you can see, will line up and go in the holes once you have it perfectly seated. Next, you're going to go ahead and secure the power button to the front panel. Although this ideally should have been done beforehand, I just simply forgot to do it but I use a little bit of blue sticky tack to hold this in place just so I can remove it easily later. That also plays into the idea of being able to undo this. However, if you want to make it more permanent, you can use something like glue or rubber cement or hot glue or whatever. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and insert all of the surrounding panels, starting with the front, moving to the back and getting the left and right. Next, I'm going to go ahead and secure those panels with four of the silver slash gold screws. There's two on the left and two on the right. Next, I mount the hard drive to the bracket. Ideally, you would use M3 screws or some Velcro or something along those lines, but I just use some captain tape for demonstration purposes. This part's a little more complicated than it should be, but basically you just line the hard drive bracket up with the screw holes going from middle to left. You're going to use one of those little silver screws slash bolt screws from the hardware to secure it to the middle and then you're going to use two long black screws put those up from the bottom going through the other two hard drive backup holes now's a good time to connect the hard drive Once again, slightly more complicated than it needs to be, but this was the only way I could think of doing it. You're gonna line up those two long black screws with the corresponding screws for the top panel. You're gonna slide the top panel down, and then you're just gonna try and match all of the edges up and slide them into place. Make sure everything looks aligned and slid in properly, and then just go ahead and insert the other four silver screws, two on the left, two on the right.
After that, you can flip the console over so that the screw holes are pointing upwards. And then you're gonna add the other three long black screws and then you're going to secure them all down. You're gonna to wanna to tighten it down to where the panel isn't able to flex up and down. If it won't go all the way down to where it won't flex at all, it should still be fine. It just might be printed that way due to the tolerances on your 3D printer. For this project, I decided to go with the original wireless adapter just because it was able to fit onto the console a little bit nicer. The only thing is when you go to put it on due to the shape of it being curved inside, you just have to wiggle it a little bit so the clips will bite onto the plastic. I did still implement the ability to use the original wireless adapter. It just doesn't look quite as clean. All you have to do is print the rear and left panel labeled Wi-Fi, and then you just insert it as seen here. I never designed a shell for it just because there's at least a couple different variants of it and there's no real easy way to secure the shell to it. You'll also notice with this one that I actually cut off a portion of the PCB because there was no circuitry inside of it and that allowed it to sit flush against the console. Sync button, you just push it in. And lastly, I mixed a little bit of fan base nostalgia here. I had about three or four key principles when designing this. First was accessibility. I wanted this to be something that anybody could do with a very minimal set of skills. So with that, this only uses original hardware from the console. You don't need any extra hardware. You don't need to solder. You just take the current one apart and install it all in the new shell. Second was modularity. I wanted this to be able to be customized in various colors or parts or material if desired. That also means being able to print things in separate parts just in case of failure due to the nature of 3D printing. With that in mind, uh, every panel is printed separately and if one messes up, you can just reprint it. And lastly, I wanted to make this feel solid and I think the way I implemented everything, I did a pretty good job. Overall, I really enjoyed making this thing uh, even though it took a couple months and took longer than it would have taken to print the original one I saw. I learned a lot doing this, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you got any comments, just leave them down below or on the download page, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!